think. What, one way of thinking about the difference between um, Charlie and Barton is that Barton says he's interested in the life of the mind. And one of the first things we learn about Charlie is his head hurts. Um, it's the difference between the head and the mind. We often use them to mean the same thing. Um, by the way, this movie has repeated references to heads. Um, you know, can't trade my head in for a new one. You know, got to go to the head office where there's a head, there's hope. Oh, you must be out of your head. The contents of your head are the property of Capital Pictures. And we got to keep our heads, Barton. And right, this guy's funny in the head. There's a lot of references to heads. Um, I, actually, that was all of them. Um, but Barton, uh, I wrote that down and memorized that. Um, but the point is, is that, is that, Barton, the difference, what's the difference in the mind and the head? Well, the head is like the physical thing, right? A, a head is something you can touch. The mind is like an idea. Not the brain, by the way. The brain you can squeeze in your hand. But the mind is more like a, it's like a metaphor for what the brain does. Um, so Barton is interested in the mind and Charlie is the head. Um, one of the things that makes Charlie uh, and Barton such a funny pair, and this is a thing that goes back to the old days of comedy of Laurel and Hardy, um, and you see it repeated again and again and again, is that it's a comedy thing. You got one skinny guy and one fat guy. Um, and also, it, it, they're, they're opposites physically, but they're also just opposites in the sense that Barton is a mind guy and Charlie is a head guy. You know what I mean? Like they're, one is mental, one is physical. Um, okay. Um, Barton goes to a kind of picnic thing with W.P. Mayhew. Um, and it, we discovered that W. Mayhew wrote a novel called Nebuchadnezzar. That is a William Faulkner reference. William Faulkner did not write a novel called Nebuchadnezzar, but William Faulkner did write a novel called Absalom, Absalom. What do they have in common? They're both named after famous figures from the Bible. Um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar will come back later in the movie. Barton will uh, be tr trying to, troubled uh, about his script, and he will see a Bible uh, in the drawer. Uh, of uh, the Gideon Bible and the, you know, that some hotels leave the, these Bibles that are in the hotel rooms because people often go to hotel rooms when they're desperate. And so people leave Bibles in there so that maybe they find some comfort in the hard times. Um, and Barton discovers, uh, he reads a passage about Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the, the story of Nebuchadnezzar from the Old Testament is that Nebuchadnezzar is a powerful king, Egyptian king. Egyptian king? Yeah. He's an Egyptian king, I think, something like that. And he, he has a dream and he wants wise men to interpret his dream. And he says, if you fail to interpret my dream correctly, I will cut you to pieces. Once again, we have that symbol, the thing, the cover on the top, the dream, the thing on the other side. What does it mean? Um, uh, and the issue of interpretation is going to become really important in this movie. Again, we've already had multiple interpretations. Um, it, it, do we interpret that sound on the other side of the wall as laughing or crying? Do we interpret the sound on the other side of this wall as violence or sex, right? So this is, it, it ties into kind of what we're doing here. Um, and, and him and Mayhew discuss uh, different kinds of writing. Um, it's really important to notice that Barton says he wants to plumb the depths. He wants to find the truth. Um, because that's what his art, it's a, that's his philosophy of art. Mayhew has a very different philosophy of art. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't want to find the truth. Mayhew wants to escape. His alcoholism is part of his escape, and he writes books in order to escape. Um, he says, actually, um, the truth does not bear scrutiny, meaning he doesn't want to look at the truth because that's too painful and terrible. He just wants an escape, either into crazy stories, uh, like he's going to write for Hollywood, or into alcohol. Um, but but art, liter art is an escape for him. But for Barton, um, he wants his art to be plumbing the depths and finding out the truth. Again, this is a discussion we've had so many times in this class about, um, so many times in this class, uh, about movies. Are they there to, you, so you learn something real about the world, or are they a, an escape into a crazy fantasy land? And we've seen movies where this, this, this has been debated in a lot of the movies we've watched this semester. Um, okay, cool. Um, all right, this is going good. Um, but but uh, uh, W.P. Mayhew makes, no, oh, he makes another Bible reference um, that again, it's one of those things you need a footnote for because my students are unlikely to catch this. Um, when Barton, because Barton has been flirting with Audrey because he likes he likes W.P. May, Mayhew's like girlfriend, uh, I guess we'll call her. Um, but at one point, W.P. Mayhew says, uh, do you know the story of Solomon's mammy? 
uh, uh, Solomon's mother in the Old Testament is Bathsheba, uh, and the story is that that King David basically stole her from another man. Uh, that's it's the W. P. Mayhew's way of letting Barton know, if you know the Bible reference, that he feels like Barton is trying to steal Audrey from him, just like King David in the Bible stole Bathsheba from Bathsheba's husband. I don't remember that dude's name. Okay. Um, and, but Mayhew, uh, Mayhew uh, is also pretty racist. Um, he sings racist songs. Uh, he's, he, they're old, they're songs from the South. Um, and again, Faulkner, also from the South, um, singing these songs, but it's about like cotton picking and, you know, old black Joe. And there it's a very, he's just drunk and singing racist songs um, and being ridiculous. Um, there is an important moment that happens here though, um, is, that, is that Barton, is angry at Mayhew for his treatment of Audrey. And Audrey tells him, you just don't understand. You lack empathy. Because Audrey feels terrible for Mayhew because she knows Mayhew's in a lot of pain and he has a wife who's crazy, I think. Um, and right, she, she feels bad for him. But empathy is when you, f it's, it's your ability to kind of feel what other people are feeling. Um, that, you know, you feel bad for other people, other human beings. She says Barton lacks empathy. This is, this should go on our list of things we're learning about Barton, right? That like Barton doesn't have empathy for Charlie. Charlie keeps trying to tell him a story and Barton cuts him off. Um, W.P. Mayhew's in a lot of pain and Barton's just like, that guy's a son of a bitch. Um, don't get me wrong. He's a great writer, but he's a son of a bitch. Um, I'm still talking like Geisler for some reason. I don't know. Los Angeles, Barton Fink. Um, so he says... Uh, but but it's a second character that we start, it's the second time we're thinking that Barton really doesn't listen to other people and he doesn't feel bad for them. He ignores Charlie and he condemns Mayhew when he could listen to Charlie and be empathetic toward what Mayhew's going through. Listen to Mayhew and learn about what's going on with that guy, but he's not really interested in that. Um, cool. All right. This is going pretty good. Um all right. Also, uh, Barton goes back to his hotel room to write his script at that point. And, and one of the one of the sentence he adds, he says, we do not hear that. We do not yet hear the fishmongers. Perhaps later we will. Uh, that's a ridiculous thing to write in a movie script. Um, the, the movie script is supposed to say what happens. Um, saying that something will perhaps happen is not helpful to making a movie, right? You just, in a novel, you could say that and be like, ah, oh, maybe this will happen. But in a movie script, this is because because you're not saying well, this is he's writing that not as dialogue for a person to say he's writing like uh, set you should say setting new york lower east side um and then you should say we hear the cry of the fishmongers that's people who sell fish um but he says we do not hear the cry of the fishmongers perhaps later we will not helpful for making a movie barton um I'm sure you guys have heard this expression. Um, I was talking about Barton's the sympathy, we, the, the lack of sympathy for other people. Um, there's an expression when you want to have sympathy for other people, and it's don't judge a person until you've walked a mile in another. In a, don't judge a man until you've walked a mile in his shoes, right? Try walking a mile in another man's shoes. Meaning, like, try if you, you you can't judge people because you don't live their life. But the expression we use is to walk uh, to walk a mile in another man's shoes means to like really live the way they live, but, you know, put, put yourself in their shoes, put yourself in their situation. And then maybe instead of being mad at them, you'll feel bad for them. Um, this almost literally happens in the movie as Charlie has gotten the wrong shoes. He begins writing while he, he seems, he seems to get going on writing when he has Charlie's shoes on. Cause that's what he should be doing. He should be putting himself in Charlie's shoes. He literally puts himself in Charlie's shoes cause he got the wrong shoes. Um, but he's, he should be metaphorically putting himself in Charlie's shoes. Meaning he should try to see life from Charlie's perspective, the regular ordinary insurance salesman, and he might be a better writer. And so the joke is that when he puts his feet into those shoes, he actually does write better. And then it gets interrupted by Charlie and we kind of, we kind of lose the moment. Okay. Cool. I'll pick this up in the next video.